Hello everyone, I welcome you back to the YouTube channel of Derma Coaching. And in the case discussion series, we will be discussing our fifth case. This case is about bovenoid papillosis. Before moving any further, I would like to inform you that we take detailed lectures on important topics of dermatology. You can get the information regarding the same from our website, which is www.dermacoaching.org. Or you can write an email to us on DERM, which is dermniharimbaja at gmail.com. Let us now discuss this case. This case is about a 23-year-old female. She presented to our OPD with complaints of dark colored gray lesions over the genitalia. Now, these lesions, uh, the duration of these lesions was not known to the patient. She did not know the exact duration since then these lesions were present. But the patient said that she noted these lesions in the past 15 days only. And in these 15 days, the lesions did not increase much in size or in number. It was associated with occasional aging, otherwise it was mostly asymptomatic in nature. She was an unmarried female and she was sexually active. So on examination, what did I see? I saw multiple hyperpigmented papules which were predominantly uh, situated over the horns veneris, labia majora, minora, and few over clitoris as well. On labia majora, the papules they were fully seen to form flowers. Apart from the leaf site, no other site was involved, no other mucosal areas were also involved. Then you can see I deliberately divided the papules into half. So you can see that multiple hyperpigmented papules they are present over the horn, labia majora, the labia minora, and over clitoris as well. And you can see over the labia majora, the various papules they are coalescing together to form flowers on both the sides. Now, after looking at this uh, clinical picture, these were my differential diagnosis. So my initial differential diagnosis was bovinoid papillosis. As you can see, this is not the typical picture of a genital port. So uh, bovinoid papillosis, it was my first diagnosis. Apart from that, verica plana, genital verica plana, genital lichen planus, and terraformer former dermatosis, that is the TFFD, were my other differentials. Uh, sometimes it might be in such a scenario, even vulval LSC, or like in simplistronicus can also be taken into consideration, but the picture is not very much clinically resembling that of a vulval like in simplistronicus. Um, so these were my, uh, you know, important differentials that I was thinking of. Now, considering the TFFD, I tried rubbing off the lesions using a spirit gauze, but there was no change in the lesions after. Uh, trying to remove the lesions also with the spirit was So the diagnosis of TFFD was zero. For genital lichen planus, the patient said that the lesions are mostly asymptomatic and it is associated with only occasional itching with due to the mild in nature and no other sites were involved, no mucosa, not even the vaginal mucosa was involved. So the chances of it being genital lichen planus were little unlikely. So they are. I was left with two important differentials, which were the COVID on papillosis and genital vericoplana. But I was not very much convinced that this can be a case of vericoplana. So I uh, decided to convince the patient to go for a biopsy. She got the biopsy done, and the sample was sent for histopathological examination. In the histopathological examination, moderate epidermal hyperplasia was present. Along with thickening and confluence of the reach ridges, high to moderate nuclear pleomorphism. So, this is very important. Epidermal hyperplasia and thickening of the ridges can be seen in many other dermatological conditions. But what caught our attention was mild to moderate nuclear pleomorphism. The epidermal keratinocytes they were arranged haphazardly and they were sprouted throughout the epidermal thickness. So, uh, basically, the nuclear pleomorphism, age. The um, you know, started mitotic fibers were also present, both normal as well as abnormal, and epidermal keratinocytes being generated in a haphazard manner. Okay, so these were the key features which were seen in the histopathological examination, and these findings were consistent with that of the bovinone papillosis. Unfortunately, I do not have a very clear 
picture of the histopathological examination of this of the bicycle slide, but I'll still try to show you something. So you can see that there is epidermal hypoplasia. The uh, keratinocytes site they are arranged haphazardly. This is not a uniform arrangement if you are able to see it very clearly. Nuclear pleomorphism, their dark staining nuclei and nuclear pleomorphism was also noted along with certain mitotic figures. So these features they were consistent with that of bovinoid papillosis, and hence um, a diagnosis of bovinoid papillosis was done. The patient was referred to a gyne gynecologist for getting a pap smear done, and uh, I started the patient on pyrethroid uracil. Other options were also uh, there, but uh, you know, going for the locally destructive procedure in such a patient was not the most ideal way of dealing with it because the area of involvement was large. So it was better to at least bring it down or control it using some form of topical therapy. Apart from 5 liter uracil, might be evicimod or retinoic acid would have been also used, but I went with 5 liter uracil. So this is how the patient is still under treatment and uh, she's still under observation. So let us see how the patient responds to this particular thing. Now let us learn about bovinoid papillosis as a whole. So what is bovinoid papillosis? It is a body genital papule. So body means what looking. So there were some of them were obviously body major and the genital papule, which histopathologically resemble squamous cell carcinoma in series. So you can see there were mitotic both uh, figures present, both typical as well as atypical. Then there was nuclear pleomorphism, haphazard arrangement of the keratinocytes. So histopathological. Uh, differential for the same can be squamous cell carcinoma in situ. Why in situ? Because the basal cell there is intact and uh, it is not damaged, and that is why it might resemble squamous cell carcinoma in situ. What is the etiological factor? Etiological factor it is uh, human papilloma virus, although there are various types of HPV which can result in the development of bovinoid papillosis, for example, 16, 18, 31, 32, 34, and so on. But human papilloma virus type 16 is the most common positive agent. It is seen in young sexually active males and females. Females are more commonly involved than females. More, uh, they have more chances of developing bovinoid papillosis. If we talk about the clinical features, we have already seen a clinical picture. So reddish brown or hyperpigmented papules in flowers can be seen over the genitalia. Yeah, because these are this is basically a genital problem, although extra genital areas can also be involved. For example, the abdomen, the thighs, these areas can also be involved. But it has been seen that when genitalia is involved, high risk HPV is more commonly, uh, you know, cited as the positive or the etiological factor. But the extra genital bovinoid papillosis, it is caused by the low risk HPV type, for example, 6, type 11. Uh, type 42, 43, and 44. How does it present in the oral mucosa? Oral mucosa can also be involved, but over there it does not present as hypopigmented papules in class. It presents as erythromatous velvety papules in class, which can involve the palate, the lips, the buccal mucosa, the tongue can also be involved. So these are the different uh, features of bovinoid papillosis. If we talk about the general histopathological features of this particular problem, there will be hyperkeratosis, parakeratosis, hypergranulosis, papillomatosis, and acanthosis. So basically, all the layers of the epidermis can show hyperplasia, which was seen in our case, hyperplasia was seen. The characteristic feature is the presence of the dysplastic keratinocytes, which are scattered throughout the epidermis. So that's what uh, uh, was seen in our case as well. The keratinocytes, they were arranged in, you know, a half a third manner throughout the epidermis with nuclear pleomorphism, uh, which was uh, seen in, you know, uh, in our patient as well. The individual keratinocytes, they showed, uh, they show hyperchromatic and pleomorphic crowded nuclear. This was a feature in our patient as well. Atyp atypical mitotic figures can be present again in, seen in our patient. The pregame can be spared and acrocerigium can be involved okay, in patients of bovinoid papillosis. So, what is acrotrichium? What is acrocerigium? So, acrotrichium is basically the intraepidermal part of the follicle. 
Well, the equation geometry intra epidermal part of the duct of the sweat gland, which is nearest to the epidermis. So basically, the intra epidermal part of the follicle is sacrocrypium, and the intra epidermal part of the duct of the sweat gland is the equation region. And moving on, pathogenesis, equocrypium is spared, it is not involved. While equation region, it can be involved in patients of bovinoid pathogenesis. Let us come to the cause and the prognosis of the disease. So the cause of the disease is variable. It might regress spontaneously, it can persist as such, or it can even progress to bovine disease or pyrexal carcinoma. The regression, spontaneous regression can be seen in the females, particularly in those patients who are immunocompetent, particularly after a first childbirth, can be seen that the disease is regressing. Or it can persist as such without any changes. Sometimes they may be uh, they may progress to Bowen's uh, disease of permissive carcinoma, which is seen in around 2.6% of the cases. This kind of change uh, to permissive carcinoma of Bowen's disease is usually seen in those patients who are older in age and are immunocompromised. The presence of bovinoid papillosis is one of the uh, risk factors for the development of the cervical carcinoma. And hence, uh, that is why the patient was sent to a gynecologist to get a pap smear done to see if any other involvement has happened. What are the treatment options which are available? Either we can offer locally destructive methods, for example, electrocautery, cryotherapy, or the laser treatment, or the patient can be started on certain topicals. The topicals which are effective in clearing bovinoid papillosis include 5 zero uracil, imidimod, and retinoic acids. What are the two differentials of bovinoid papillosis and bovine disease? The name, they also match bovinoid papillosis and bovine disease. So that is why we should know the differences between the two diseases. And uh, that is why I've made this table. So, bovinoid papillosis is present as a hyperpigmented papillosis plug, while bovine species is present as erythematous pale plug. The etiological factor for development of bovinoid papillosis includes mostly human papilloma virus and that of mostly toxic gene. While bovine species can be caused by chronic UV radiation, arsenic exposure, human papilloma virus exposure, or because of the exposure to certain other. Uh, carcinogen, certain genetic factors, trauma, etc. If we talk about the histopathological changes, full thickness epidermal dysplasia, it is not seen in open or papillosis, it is rather scattered, and uh, that is why it is said that the keratinocyte, the appearance of the dysplastic keratinocyte, is uh, said to have a short gun appearance, it is short at different places. Well, full Thickness epidermal dysplasia can be seen in bovine species. That is why it is said to have a wind blown appearance of the atypical keratinocyte. So, acrotrichium is spared and acrotrichium can be involved in patients of bovinoid papillosis. Both can be involved in patients of bovine species. Dermis can show dilated capillaries in bovinoid papillosis, and dilated capillaries are active in the dermis in the bone. So, this is all you need to know about a patient of bovinoid papillosis. I'll just uh, revise the clinical features with you. Hyperpigmented papules and plaques involving the genital area, and they are asymptomatic in nature. Uh, occasional itching can be present and is caused by human papilloma virus 16. This is a the most common uh, etiological factor for development of the bovinoid papillosis. Treatment depends upon how much extensive it is. You can start a topical treatment, for example, 5 to the uracil and UVTMOD or retinoic acid, or you can offer locally destructive procedures such as electrocautery and cryotherapy or even laser treatment. I hope you found today's case interesting. Thank you for watching this lecture. Take care. Have a nice day.